Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back once again. I'm Matthew. This is Wadley's channel, and we are continuing on with the my favorite WWF Hasbro tournament. This is going to be the first and possibly only episode for uh, Series Four. Now we're only looking at eight figures today, so there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't conclude the entire series in one video. Now this would be a heartbreaking one. Uh, just to Looking at the way I have them set up right now, uh, it really sucks because some of my all-time favorite figures are in this uh, the series. Now, obviously, Series 4 came out later in life for me, so it's one that I'm more familiar with than pretty much than any other figure. Now, I only had three figures from uh, this particular series. As I described in the last video, never had anything from Series 3, never had anything from Series 5 onward. So several from Series 1 and 2, and then a few more from Series 4. That concluded my uh, childhood wrestling figures. Well, at least for the Hasbro line. You know, we had a number of, uh, I think a half a dozen or so, Galoobs. And this is why you'll see videos that I've made in the past. Kind of reflecting on some of the different figures you know I've used as, as a child to, to participate in Royal Rumbles or tag teams. You know, single matches, what have you. So, uh... We are going to dive right back into the first matchup uh, for Series 4 figures. Now, this one might be a little bit un uneven matchup, and that is the Undertaker going against uh, Ricky Steamboat. So, there are a couple things about this particular matchup. For starters, we had the Undertaker as kids, so that already gives him a leg up over Ricky Steamboat. The overall design of the figure. It's perfection. Uh, what do I talk about not being in love with? The right extended arm. Is it the worst? No. It's very playable. Uh, as a kid, did you really care? Not really. As an adult, kind of looking at that, especially if you're you know buying and, and selling and you realize how easy it is for the extended arm to get broken during shipment, you know that's something that you, you think about uh, when you are collecting these figures. Or, or distributing them, selling them. But other than that, I mean, like I said, this is, you know, maybe among my figures, Bret Hart probably being the other one, the most common WWF figure I ever used. And I always had him square off against, like, Bigfoot um, from Harry and the Hendersons, the little Just Toys bend them that I talked about in the past. It's such a fun figure. The overall look of the figure is absolutely amazing. This, to me, is it. This is The Undertaker. This is what you would classify as the dead man. You know, The Undertaker later on in life when became more of like a biker type uh, type character. To me, that's not The Undertaker. This right here. Hat, come in the ring, and then his trench coat. Paul Bear by her side. The urn. That will always be The Undertaker for me. I don't care anything about what came after. You know, to me, that wasn't the same character. The fact that he kept the same name for 20 years, uh, or 30 years, I mean, I think he retired in 2020, so, yeah, 30 years, man, that's crazy. That is such a long and storied history of one of the single greatest wrestlers in history of all time, uh, so, of any era. Great pose, great look, I, I, I like the little eyeshadow, I don't know if you can really see it, or, or if the light is really making it difficult but that's so awesome such a beautiful good looking figure now I talked about it a lot in the past I always said the Ricky Steamboat for LJN was in my opinion one of the worst figures I didn't like his pose the whole hand grip thing was so dumb yeah I get it he does a little arm chop thing but a little karate chop whatever but it's just weird this Ricky Steamboat I guess because of when I really could remember wrestling this, to me, is the Ricky Steamboat that was, you know, most predominant in my mind. Uh, so, obviously, going back and watching old videos, wrestling videos on YouTube or Coliseum Home videos, what have you, seeing him decked out in the more modern, uh, recent uh, black pants type of deal that you would find from LJN, yeah, that makes sense, but a lot of people who, uh, who were probably born in, you know, late, mid to late 70s, early 80s, this right there, I'm pretty sure they despise this particular figure. Um, it's just one I'm, I'm personally uh, familiar with. And it is an absolutely beautiful figure. Again, my duplicates, not all of them have the accessories. In fact, 
I think I uh, mailed off a few of my uh, accessories for my duplicates, but most of my figures have uh, several, have all those accessories with them. And um, aesthetically, he kind of gives you like that He-Man look. Not necessarily the body type, but just the overall warrior design. So I think that's really amazing. And then when you got the cape on there, and it's got the little dragon background, whatever, either up or down, I, I keep two of them in my dis primary display case. Be one with the shield down, one with the cape up. This is a really good looking figure. And again, another top 20 figure in my opinion. Uh, fighting pose, again, like so many others. It's good. It's great. You can do everything you need to. Punching, clothesline, body slam. Everything from the little... <laughs> I don't know, the fins, what do you call that? Uh, coming out of his... Uh, little scales coming out of his uh, wristbands. Overall look is just fantastic. If you're going off of color scheme alone, yeah, there is so much more to like about the Ricky Steamboat. At the end of the day, The Undertaker from Series 4 is a bona fide finalist in this competition. This is one of the most well-known and respected figures I've ever had in my life. It's a very common figure for me, and to me, it has to be a no-brainer. You have to put The Undertaker over Ricky Steamboat. I do enjoy the figure, but I just don't have history with this. This one, I do. The Undertaker defeats Ricky Steamboat. Now, this matchup also sucks because I did have both of these figures. And it includes Bret Hart against the British Bulldog. To me, it was never Davey Boy Smith. It was always the British Bulldog. I think not until I started collecting LJNs did I hear the name Dynamite Kid. And I could be wrong. I probably could have heard that name in the past as a, as a kid. But I don't have any recollection of that. So, to my knowledge at least modern day, prior to collecting LJNs, I, have, I would have no idea who that is. So when I think British Bulldog, I don't think two characters. I only think this guy right here. The British Bulldog is arguably one of the greatest wrestlers of the generation. You know, definitely one of my top ten favorites. What's sad is the 1995 Royal Rumble, which is one of the greatest Royal Rumbles for a couple reasons. One, it's the first Royal Rumble where the first man in ended up winning the whole tournament. But also, number two, not only was Shawn Michaels at number one <clears throat> and won the tournament, <clears throat> excuse me, but David Boy Smith was number two, and he was right there, the last man standing, alongside Shawn Michaels at the end of the match. Not only did your number one champion win, <clears throat> but your number two guy was the last one eliminated, so... That was pretty spectacular. I think that David Boy was a, an Intercontinental Champion. I don't think he was ever Heavyweight Champion. Of course, the Bulldogs were always uh, were constant uh, Tag Team Champions. I mean, not constant, but they were Tag Team Champions too. Him and David Boy, you know, the acrobatics kind of like remind me a lot of the Rockers. To me, watching old videos of them, they were just another perfect tag team. And... With Davy Boy being married to Bret Hart's sister, you know, that family tree aspect as well. To me, another one right there along with The Undertaker, <clears throat> two of the most played with uh, Hasbro figures of my childhood, one of the most beloved figures ever, one of the most beloved characters, everything from his entry music to his color scheme, the fact that he used to come down the aisle, get to the ring, you know, take off his sunglasses, give it to a to a child. <clears throat> you know, that was always really impressive. His commercials. There's so many memories with Bret Hart and, of course, this particular figure. Now, obviously, they do a little bit better when they get later on in the series when they remake this figure, but uh, we'll talk about that when the time comes. <sighs> These figures have two perfect poses. You know, you know how much I love the bench press pose. I think it's one of the best. You know, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, Animal has this pose. Uh, Ultimate War has this pose. Hulk Hogan. I mean, just a ton of different characters uh, come with the little bench press. And it's such an amazing... And, and again, the color scheme it, it, throughout is, is phenomenal. I can't say enough about this. Even the hair. I mean, so impressive. 
I'm wondering if Wrestling Rider, when he did his custom British Bulldog for me, if he modeled after this, or if that's... Or I don't think he does the actual head sculpting. Uh, I think he buys the heads, and then uh, he adds it to the figure. But uh, the fact that they got the bushiness of the, of the hair, I thought that's so remarkable uh, that he was able to add that to his figure. It was so reminiscent of this figure, so again, that's another reason why it, it, it meant so much to me. If it comes down to the arm press or the double fisted, I still believe that the Bret Hart figure is a better fighting figure, better and better for play. Most certainly a better body slamming figure, and that to me is like light years ahead of anything else. Bret Hart's gonna win. Uh, there's no reason to beat around the bush. Bret Hart is the better figure, overall color scheme and everything, fighting pose, history with the figure again. Undertaker, Bulldog, and, and you know uh, Bret Hart were all three figures I had as a, as a kid. I don't know, remember where I was. Uh, if I had to guess, maybe 2007 or possibly 2009. I know it had to be right after I got back from one of my combat deployments. Um, so I was living on post. The last three and a half years I was in the Army. My wife and I lived in family housing. And so I know I bought a lot of figures off eBay. Uh, and I got a lot of Toy Biz figures. I didn't know anything about them. Uh, the only reason I bought that lot, I think I paid like 90 bucks or something, is because it had a few Hasbro figures. I think I had Typhoon, I had British Bulldog, and I can't remember who else was uh, was in the lot. But one other person, one other figure. I didn't care about the handful or two dozen, whatever, or not two dozen, a dozen figures I had from Toy Biz, whatever. Uh, those three Hasbro's, that's what I uh, really coveted. Oddly enough, when I bought those, that was it. I mean, I I think it was just important for me to just say I had a few Hasbro figures. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of it from childhood. But I didn't really get back into collecting my Hasbro's, not until you know around September or October of 21. And then when I started collecting them, I, I, went, I went all in. Uh, I got that collection completed or as close to complete as possible within, I think, six months or something, maybe less. So from uh, Robert Jackson, I did get a uh, custom 123 Kid and Bart Gun. So uh, that did complete, officially complete my collection. Again, uh, those customs, they're identical to the original. So I will consider my collection complete at this, at this time. Uh, Bret Hart defeating British Bulldog. That was a heartbreaker. Two tag teams I absolutely love. Two tag teams that produced four of the most perfect figures of the entire line, yet not a single one of these four figures were on my top ten list, and that really hurt. Uh, I do believe, I do think I'd probably put them 11 through 14. I'd have to put them 11 through 14, you would imagine, if I were to do a you know 11 through 20 list. But I am going to put them, uh, the tag teams, against each other. So we are looking against Hawk and Animal of Legion of Doom. I have Legion of Doom listed as my all-time favorite uh, tag team. But I have more knowledge, more history with Rockers. So you would think that, you know, with their acrobatics, I think the, the ease of, of their movements, the, the way that they just gel together, that they would be my favorite. I don't know. I, I think these were just like a major powerhouse. Think of, like, the Yankees against the uh, Kansas City Royals, you know, the, with the Rockers being the Royals. Yeah, you got a juggernaut going against your not-so-popular or not-so-powerful uh, team, essentially. I think that's why I always covered uh, Legion of Doom above all else. To me, they were always jug the juggernaut tag team. Their figures are absolutely amazing. I really wish when Random Treasures did their Legion of Doom figures that they included uh, the chest, uh, the, the chest plates and all that, because those things were so amazing. The overall look of these figures are perfection. So, I do like the fact that they did give each of these figures their own fighting pose, which is pretty fantastic. I just wish they didn't give Hawk these fused legs. I mean, if they given like the uh, Series Three Boss Man or, or Macho Man pose. You know, with the left leg out and the right leg kind of outward uh, or back bent a little bit, that would have been good. You know, that would have been solid. I I don't care so much for the the hand pose. Uh, that one's decent. 
the fuse legs, it just kind of ruins it for me. But again, they are two different poses, so that definitely means a lot. Animal always seems to have the best facial uh, facial paint among the figures. I think Remco might be the only exception. And of course, you know, the little British Bulldog Power Slam uh, press. Uh, with the hands like that, I like that better than the press, but I'm not going to sit here for 20 minutes and, and harp on these for too long. Well, because I, I know that Animal is going to come out victorious. Better facial paint, uh, better positioning of the legs. The hand press, arm press, uh, body slam pose, it, it's fine. It's, it's definitely a serviceable figure. Very pleasurable if you're a kid to play with these. I never had Hasbro or Legion of Doom from Hasbro, so you know, first time getting these or first time even seeing these was probably when I started collecting uh, the Hasbro line. And I talked about it a lot in the past. I'm like, look, as a kid, I didn't call them Hasbro. I didn't know what they were uh, up until my 20s, maybe even 30s. Who knows? I, I didn't know who the manufacturer of these figures were. When I started collecting the line, and you know, I'm like, okay, those, they're made by Hasbro. Awesome. A lot of these figures from Hasbro, the first time I've ever seen them or knew about them was when I started actually collecting the figures. And absolutely elite figures. I absolutely love them. Once again, Animal Legion of Doom moves forward to round two. Now, the one tag team that might be, or the figures which might be even better than Legion of Doom, are the Nasty Boys. Again, another top three at best, maybe top five at worst, uh, favorite, favorite tag team um, of mine. Of course, to me, guys like Legion of Doom, or tag team of Legion of Doom, uh, Nasty Boys, you know, Steiner Brothers, yeah, they were all WWF guys, but to me, they will always be, my, my first mindset is WCW, all day, every day. You know, they used to kind of throw guys into the, to the turnbuckle, and then kind of, like, you know, throw their arms in their face, you know. <laughs> I was always so grossed out by that, but it was just, you know, good humor, a lot of good fun to watch their matches. Two phenomenal figures. For me, Jerry Sags easily has the better fighting pose than Brian Nobbs. Not a huge... I, don't, I, can't, I can't stop saying not a huge fan of this because it's not the ideal pose for me, but it's not anything that, you know, that really distracts me or that I hate on. The one, two, three, kid, Ric Flair, Rick Rude, uh, fighting pose. I absolutely despise that pose, one hundred percent, no doubt. I don't despise this pose. I just, it's not just not my favorite. Let's just put it that way. Aesthetically, again, Brian Knobs all day, beautiful figure, all over, fantastic. Get rid of the belt. Amazing. See, and these are those little belts I talk about. You get people on YouTube talking about uh, these particular championship belts and talk about how they're so much better than the WCW Galoo belts. I'm like, who are you kidding? You can't compare, you know, plastic or, or rubber belts to these little laminate belts that don't do anything. Uh, you got the little Velcro. Sometimes when you're, when you're tearing them apart or not, Velcro comes off one side, or it sticks to the other, or something. It's just no, it's not my favorite. But I wanted all of my figures to be belted, and these were some of the belts I bought. I bought a ton of these. Bought a ton of them from multiple sellers. I actually bought my first lot. I think I had like ten belts or something, and I despised it. Yet I still went back and bought a ton more from the same seller and from other sellers. So. And occasionally you might run into a to a seller who sells a figure and he adds these belts to them. Same thing, same design overall uh, for the shirts and pants and everything. No change there. I love that they both come with sunglasses. The look of their faces, remarkable. This to me, again, is an easy battle. I think Jerry Sags, hands down, with the fighting pose, much better. And... It's just a just a fun character, just a fun figure, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing Animal 
and Jerry Sags battle in the next round. What sucks is if that's how it plays out and you see Undertaker take on Bret Hart, Jerry Sags, which you probably will because right now I'm keeping all the tournaments, all the rounds, uh, all the series even. So you will actually see Undertaker versus Hart and then Legion of Doom take on Nasty Boy uh, for round two. So either Bret Hart or Undertaker is going to be eliminated. That's going to suck. Uh, those to me, like I said, based on nostalgia, based on history, you know, playability and overall look, there's no reason to think that those two couldn't be finalists. Now I could switch things up in round two, literally take all the winners, put them in a hat, write them down, throw them on the floor, spread them around, pick two names up and go off that list. But I'm probably going to keep keep it in line with how I have them listed in my notebook here based on, you know, who won after who, so on. So if we ever do this tournament again, uh, I never said I was going to do an LJN tournament again. So doing a Hasbro tournament once, who knows, you know, six months on the road, 10 years down the road, there's a very good chance I could do this tournament again. 10 years from now, I don't think I'll still be doing YouTube. Um, I mean, if I become successful at doing this, sure. But I, I think for the last for the next few years, I, I, if I do stick with this long term, it's just going to be for pleasure, for enjoyment. You know, meet other people and you know, get the opportunity to share my my collections and whatnot with other folks. So I've completed uh, both rounds four, uh, three and four today. Since this is going, since I've done rounds three and four in one video, I'll probably do round five next. I'm really looking forward to making a couple other videos. I haven't continued on with the uh, 21 to 30 list of my top 10 or my top favorite LJN figures, so I want to make that video as well. So I'll probably make that one, and you know what? Yeah, I'll make that video, and I also want to make the uh, what's up with video uh, regarding the original San Francisco toy maker video uh, action figures. All right. I'm going to close the video here. Uh, per usual, uh, leave a comment if you have any. Um, I don't normally tell my viewers to subscribe, but I guess I have to start doing that nowadays. I don't know. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate your support uh, as usual, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Yep, didn't hit my pause button.